Wagner is back in Ukraine, but under a new name. Russian capabilities are now severely degraded, the Crimean bridge is pretty much defenseless, and Russians suffered record-breaking losses in one single day. And besides all that, Putin hears voices, which tell him to negotiate. But more about all this in just a couple of minutes. What's up, investors? It's the Russian dude. And let's get straight to the point and talk about some ridiculous Russian propaganda. So, we have the cringe representative of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Russia, Maria Zakharova, who mentioned that Americans were testing some chemicals in Nevada desert. And then she said that, you remember Americans, whenever we said that we Russians, we are not gonna test nuclear weapons until you do it. And now you try to do something behind our backs. Don't you see Americans? Should we start testing the nukes as well? And to begin with, so far there is no confirmed at this moment of recording this video any tests of chemicals in Nevada unless it comes from the Russian sources. Which made me, to be honest, think. So, Russians cannot test nukes until Americans do this, right? So what if Russians realize something? What if we, Russians, say that Americans tested the nukes even though they did not? But who cares, right? And so if we say that they tested the nukes, it gives us the green light to test the nukes ourselves. I mean, guys, you see the logic here. I think it is perfect logic suitable only for the Russian propagandists. So my question to you guys is, what do you think is the probability that Russians eventually will come up with a story like this, that Americans tested something just to justify Russians themselves testing the nuclear weapons? Please let me know in the comments. And speaking about probabilities and percentages, guys, you know what time it is, right? Because 48.7% of you guys are not subscribed to my channel, which is an increase from 47.9% of the last week. Not good, not good. But we can all change it together. And yes, I'm speaking to you, Gary, Harry, uh, Robert, uh, Nick, Edward, and of course you, David. Because all you need to do to change the statistics in our favor is to simply uh, like this video and subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me on Instagram, the weekend is here, to see how I live outside of YouTube, the link is down below. <coughs> all right, now let's get uh, serious in some way and talk about Putin hearing voices which tell him to negotiate. Then we'll go to the south of Ukraine where Russian defenses and any capabilities are at this point pretty much degraded. And then we'll go to the east of the country where Russians are suffering astonishing losses just to finalize everything with Wagner being back in Ukraine. And so yes, speaking about Putin, he recently once again claimed that he heard somebody from the West, including from Ukraine, talking about that Russia and Ukraine must resume negotiations. But in fact, Ukrainian representatives, both military or government representatives, neither of them were speaking about peace talks with Russia for a very long time. And in fact, we can even have uh, these infographics you can see right now on your screen, which tells you how many times Putin claimed that somebody was talking about negotiations. Uh, most likely these are these uh, voices inside his head we are talking about. And even though Putin hints us in every way possible, using different people, that he wants this special military operation to be over as soon as possible, it is just that he himself cannot acknowledge this directly. But the war still goes on, and Ukrainians on the other hand, they continue to come up with pretty innovative ways how to win it. Such as for example, right here is the most recent development of Ukrainians, is this uh, so-called anti-mine boots, which Ukrainians whenever they demine the territory are wearing, and in case they miss a mine, the explosion will not cause that much harm to their feet. 
and as you might already know, extremely big number of mines is one of the most serious problems as we speak. Then we have another country, Croatia, which is pledging its Mi-8 helicopters to Ukraine. And ultimately, and this is extremely big news, is that Biden requested $105 billion support package from Congress that includes aid both for Ukraine and Israel. And this article I was able to find on ground.news, the website which I have been personally using every single day whenever preparing for my daily news updates. And what makes this platform so unique is that it allows you to see how the very same article is represented by different sides of the media – left, for example, center or right. And one of the most recent features of Ground News that I absolutely love is that it uses the artificial intelligence to automatically compare and summarize the headlines so you can immediately see the difference in coverage. Ground News is able to achieve this by pulling different articles about the same story from multiple sources, such as for example in our case there are a total of 160 different sources. You can also see the bias distribution we talked about previously, and our article is mainly covered by the center media, to be specific, 57%. And next you can see the factuality. And it shows that only 1% is low factuality, while 78% is high meaning that the majority of articles are trustworthy. Ground News even shows Russian state media such as for example Russia Today, which is extremely important, because many social media companies and news aggregators, they simply remove Russian sources from their platforms, leaving us in the dark about their motives. And another very useful feature is that Ground News allows you to follow specific topics, such as in my case it will be Russia politics, Ukraine war, Vladimir Putin, Russia and Ukraine. And if you want to be just like me and experience these amazing features, please subscribe using my link ground.news forward slash Russian dude for as little as one dollar per month or get unlimited access with 30% off. I highly encourage you to check it out because this is an extremely good platform to refer to your daily news and by using my link down below this also shows a tremendous support to the channel. And so yes, now let's talk about the situation in the south of Ukraine where Russian capabilities are now severely degraded and then we'll switch our attention to the east. And first of all, as we refer to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, Ukrainian marines who are able to cross Dnipro river, they are still on the other side of Kherson region, they gained a pretty confident foothold and are engaging in combat activities with Russians, but they are not going anywhere, they are not leaving. It has even been mentioned by some Ukrainian sources that several Ukrainians were able to even enter this settlement called Poima. And speaking about Kherson region, right here we have a pretty interesting video where a Russian soldier was filling one of his cooking TV shows, I guess, and then the artillery strike began. So he had to retreat as soon as possible, while still recording the consequences. Also along the southern front lines, an extremely cheap Ukrainian drone called Mavic was able to destroy a multi-million dollar artillery system of Russians once again proving this to be an extremely good investment. But most importantly, according to the earlier report by the British intelligence, is that as soon as Ukrainians were able to receive Atakams, hopefully this time I pronounced it correctly, as soon as Ukrainians received Atakams missiles, Russian capabilities degraded significantly, and this includes both offensive and defensive, and also logistics. And this also includes the Crimean bridge, which now is technically pretty much defenseless. The only protection that Russians have right now are maybe air defense systems surrounding this bridge and some sunken vessels, which Russians keep next to the bridge against protecting against Ukrainian naval drones. But as you can see, if Ukrainians are able to reach such distant military objects of Russians as far as in Sevastopol, destroying objects such as even submarines, it is no wonder and no secret that in the future we might see even more attacks against Crimean Bridge as well. 
And guess what? Another British intelligence report also confirms that the Crimean bridge, for obvious reasons, is a vital link for Russians in the south of Ukraine. And then it goes all the way to the east of Ukraine as well, the supplies I'm talking about, which basically means that it still remains a priority target for Ukrainians. And now, as promised, let me give you a similar brief update from the east. But first of all, let's make an extremely quick stop in the north of the country, where according to Serhii Naev, Russians concentrated approximately 19,000 of its soldiers, both on the territory of Russia and Belarus. But as for now, there are no reported active movements by those Russian soldiers, and Ukrainians in the meantime, they planted approximately 500,000 mines next to its northern border. Which basically means that Russians, in case they do want to advance, for every Russian soldier it will be approximately 25 plus mines. Next, we refer to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, which claims that Russians continue their offensive attempts along Kupiansk Svatov Krimina front line. There are still somehow reported advancements which are not yet confirmed by this map, but pretty much it is the same as every day. On the other hand, Ukrainians were able to destroy an assault group of Russians next to Svatove. At the same time, as you can see from this video, one single Ukrainian with the rocket launcher was able to stop the advancement of an entire Russian tank. And then whenever Russian tanks started to try to retreat, it also got caught in some mines, obliterating it completely. And then we have extremely interesting video provided to us by Ukrainians, which shows a perfect case example of how to stop your enemy from advancing. Basically what is happening is that there is a convoy of Russian armored vehicles, Ukrainians destroyed the first one and the last one, they also do some attacks against the middle of the convoy, and Russians they obviously start panicking, being in chaos and attempting to retreat, some of them even abandon their military vehicles, becoming even easier targets for Ukrainian artillery. And as a result of this, in less than 5 minutes, the entire assault attempt, which probably Russians spent several days or even weeks planning, it was completely stopped, because it was obliterated. And I really want you to see this video for yourself, you can find the uncensored full version on my Patreon, the link is down below, there is one week of free access for you to see if you like the service or not, and this is a great support for the channel as well. Thank you so much. And while Russians were concentrated so much trying to capture Avdivka, Ukrainians resumed their offensive to the south of Bakhmut. And as you can see from this map, they were able to advance a little bit to the northeast of Klishivka. And speaking about Avdivka, oh man, this is a total record breaking annihilation of Russian forces. And sometimes it does not even require Ukrainians to do this. Because, for example, as you can see from this video, a Russian armored personnel carrier was just driving through the minefield. I have no idea which Russian officer authorized them to do it without even clearing the mines first. And obviously, the result is as expected. Besides that, Ukrainians themselves were able to destroy another heavy flamethrower of Russians called Sonsepyok. Guess using what? Exactly. Another cheap drone. But this still does not stop Russians from advancing. At this point, it feels like that half or even the majority of Russian infantry are perfect candidates for the Darwin's award, because right here is another video of Russian convoy and infantry trying to advance to Avdivka using exactly the same routes their previous comrades used unsuccessfully. The result is exactly the same. I mean, what would you expect? You do exactly the same thing expecting a different result? Isn't this what is called madness? However, the Russian propaganda claims that the Russian offensive in Avdiivka is quite successful, because Russians were able to establish the control over this hill, which allegedly they captured several days ago, and now they captured it again. But, but as you took a look at this map, just take a look, this is how much land Russians were able to capture with thousands of losses. 
This is just does not make sense. It is definitely not worth it. And guess what? If we go to the south of Ukraine, we can actually see that Ukrainians themselves were able to liberate a little bit of land to the east of Nevelske. And speaking about the number of losses, even Ukrainians themselves, they quote it as astonishing number. The record-breaking number of Russian soldiers, which have been already eliminated trying to advance and capture Avdivka, was pretty much absolutely minimal gains, if any. And to make it more specific, in the last 24 hours, Russians reportedly lost 1,380 soldiers, 55 tanks and 120 other armored vehicles. Yes, in 24 hours. I mean, if this does not tell you how much Russian military generals and officers and Russian leadership, how much they absolutely do not care about their own people, I don't know what else will make you believe this. And in the meantime, the Ministry of Defense of Russia continues to live in a completely separate universe from the rest of the world. Because Putin, he mentioned that since the beginning of war, Ukraine lost 18,000 tanks. <laughs> I don't even think Ukraine ever had this many tanks in the first place. Then Shaigu mentioned that since the beginning of Ukrainian counteroffensive, Ukrainians lost 1,500 tanks, which still big number which most likely is not true, but not as outrageous as 18,000. And recently the Ministry of Defense of Russia set another number, which is 12,778. <laughs> I mean, just take a look at this. Putin, Shaigu, Ministry of Defense of Russia, they do not even look like they do not even communicate between each other, coming with these random numbers. And at this point, there is nothing much, I think, that can surprise us. Unless maybe that Wagner, which is getting back to Ukraine, we already talked about this several weeks ago, but this time looks like even more Wagner soldiers are getting back to the country. But the reason not that many people talk about it, it is because they start fighting under a completely new name. And this new name, I would like all of you to remember it, is called Redut. It is considered to be only consisting of volunteers and under contract soldiers, including the ones from Wagner. And according to the British intelligence report, once again, the number of soldiers inside Redut is at least 7,000. But what we do know for sure is that Wagner is no longer as capable as they used to be under Prigozhin's leadership. Because simply right now they do not have such strong leader that unites them all. It basically means that every single Wagner soldier right now is the very same as the Russian common army. And speaking about the leadership, you might remember alleged partner in crime of Prigozhin, Sergei Suravikin, who also was kinda involved in the mutiny back in June, and then he kinda disappeared from the public eye, later to be sent to the Middle East to settle some problems. And so apparently recently he was replaced as the chief of Russian aerospace to be replaced by another person, Viktor Avzalov. So as you can see, the Russian propaganda and Putin, they gave some time for the Russian public to kinda forget about Suravikin and Wagner's mutiny, and as soon as nobody is caring about him anymore, this is when the replacement begins. So now the main questions are. Will Suravikin, just like Prigozhin, board an incorrect plane? Will he be very not careful next to open windows in high-rise buildings? Or will he try a special Russian tea prepared by Putin himself? And in any way, whatever happens, I'll make sure to report on these events as soon as possible, so if you don't want to miss them, just please, guys, I'm asking you. <laughs> Just please consider subscribing to my channel, it does help a lot. Thank you so much also, Ground News, for sponsoring this video. Thank you, Patreons, for supporting me, and see you on Tuesday.